Hi and welcome to today's discussion on Scala. Today we are going to have a look on local methods in Scala. Next is function literals and first class functions in Scala. And finally we will also touch on placeholder syntax in Scala. I will jump right into the demo to discuss about local methods in Scala. In previous video we have coded few examples using tail recursion and learn how tail recursion can result in more functional code. Let us build on our knowledge. This example here is another usage of tail recursion where we are trying to find out sum of all digits between provided boundaries. To achieve, to achieve tail recursion, we'll be providing the initial result as zero and then we will accumulate the sum in the result once we hit the upper boundary condition we are going to return the result. Let us quickly move to Scala REPL to run our code. I am going to load and import sum up in REPL. I will also provide my input as 5, 10 and result as 0. And yes, it has returned me 45, which is good. But I don't like this code as First, we are exposing our internal representation to the client, where client knows that result is going to be accumulated in third input parameter, that is result. Second, because we are providing client the liberty to provide first initial value of result, client can fill around with the value. So I want to hide our result val from client. Let us see what can be done. So to solve our problem, first I will make our current sum up method as private and rename it to sum up recursion. I will update my recursive call as well. Next I will declare a new sum up method. This new sum up method will only accept in input boundaries to calculate sum. The method will call sum up recursion to do rest of the job by, provi by providing the third input parameter result as zero. Let us load our example back again in Scala REPL. I will provide the same input and indeed the result is the same. Now even though our code looks good but this is not really Scala way of doing the things. If you think about it we have now created a private helper sum up recursion that is closely bound to sum up method and cannot be used anywhere else. In production code, you may have seen the similar situation where you would have a lot of closely bound helper methods. Scala has a better way of dealing with such helper methods. Scala allows you to create local methods within the method. So rather than declaring sum up recursion as private, I am going to move our sum up recursion method inside sum up method itself. Now sum up recursion is local to sum up method thus achieving even greater, uh, greater abstraction. Let us load and run our sum up example again to check if we are still getting the same output. Indeed it is the same. The beauty of local method solution is that that the local methods can access all the variables of its parent method. That's, thus it has given us a chance to further refactor the code. If you closely observe the code of sum up recursion, we are not doing anything with our upper boundary that is val b. We are just passing it around so that when the time comes, this upper boundary can help us to break the recursion. Now because the val of b is already available with parent sum up method, I will remove it from the recursion call. This will further clean up our code and make it easy to read and understand. Let us try it out in Scala shell with the same input and the result is same again. Hence, local methods and functions can help us to achieve greater abstraction. It can help us to split our code into manageable and simpler building blocks. Additionally, it can also help us to remove clutter from our code by hiding our helper functions and methods within the parent method. 
Now let us move on to first class function and function literals. Scala support first class function. That means not only you can define function and call them, but you can also write unnamed function literals and pass them around as values. Function literals are not new to us. We have seen and used function literals in our introduction to Scala playlist. A function literal is compiled into a class that when instantiate at runtime is a function value. Here is a simple example of function literal that adds one to a number. These function literals can also be assigned to val. Let us quickly move on to have a look at function literal example. I have declared a class shop here that offer that offers two types of discounts. First is Black Friday discount that is 30% of the original price and next is regular discount that is 21%. We will declare a method final price that will be used by shopkeeper to calculate the final price after reduction. Final price method will accept two inputs. First is current price and next is the discount that we need to offer. The method will then return discounted price. Let us load and import our code into Scala shell. Let us try out few inputs with different prices and different types of discount. One input with Black Friday discount and another one is with regular discount. In real world, it is quite common that situation changes. Let us suppose that there is a loyal customer that has come to the shop and shopkeeper wants to offer even greater discount to this loyal customer. But our program has no functions for additional discount. But that is not a problem in such scenario. We will use unnamed function literals to our final price method and will calculate the new price. Here we will provide a function literal that would provide 35% discount to our loyal customer. And here is another one with 40% discount to our loyal customer. Function literals are just not limited to single line or single calculation. If you want to have more than one statement in function literal, surround its body with curly braces and put one statement per line, thus forming a full block of statement that should be executed. Just like a method call, when the function value is invoked, all of the statements will be executed and the value returned from the function is whatever results from evaluating the last expression. Here, we have modified our function to output description statements. This description will help shopkeeper to ensure that he has indeed invoked right function. Let us go back to Ripple to load and test our new function block. So we have invoked Black Friday discount. The description related to Black Friday discount is printed on the screen. And when we invoke regular discount, the corresponding discount description is printed on the screen. So now that you have seen the nuts and bolts of function literal, many Scala libraries give you opportunities to use them. For example, a map method is available for all collections. It takes a function as an argument and invokes that function on each of its element. Here is how it can be used to multiply two with all elements of a list. Another one is filter, where you can filter out the elements of your choice. It accepts a function argument that returns boolean result. If the result of function is true, filter will accept the element, else it will discard the element. I will filter out all the even numbers from the list. Let's move on to placeholder syntax. Again, I will jump to a demo before I start explaining about placeholder syntax. Consider this number list again, where we want to filter out all the even numbers. 
will start with writing a function literal. But Scala can make our life even easier by making function literal even more concise. We can use underscores as a placeholder for one or more parameters. One of the conditions to use placeholder syntax is that each parameter appear only once uh, within the function literal. Let us consider this another example where we want to double each member of the list. We want to place an underscore and ask Scala to multiply it by 2. Hence, a placeholder syntax can make your function literal even more concise. As we have already seen that each parameter must appear only once in the expression. Think of underscore as a blank in the expression. This blank will be filled with an argument to the function each time the function is invoked. However, there is yet another condition to write placeholder syntax. The last condition to write placeholder syntax is to provide enough information for, for the compiler. Consider this example where we want to add two incoming integers. So if we are, if we only write underscores plus underscore, Scala is going to complain as compiler cannot infer the type of underscore. However, if we in, inform Scala about the incoming parameters, then Scala will create a function for us. Here, both our incoming parameters are integers. Let us try to execute our new function by providing inputs as 2 and 3. And we can guess the output is 5. As we have seen today, Scala is quite concise. It may take some time for you to grasp concepts of Scala, but it can really make your life easier. I hope you are enjoying Scala as much as I do. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.